Hello, welcome. My name is Laurel Don Houston. I am the founder of Reflections Inside and Out and the creator of Body Mapping. Hello, this is Body Mapping Monday with Laurel. And I we are doing eyebrows and eyelashes today. And so I went and drew mine on. That's why I'm a little bit late and they're super dark. But I wanted to make sure. <laughs> so I'm cracking myself up because I can see myself in my camera. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you guys could see my eyebrows and understand what I was talking about as I went through this. I actually get a lot of questions about eyebrows when it comes to body mapping because there's something that are constantly changing. So just quick here at the beginning, a little bit of a review. What is body mapping? Body mapping is the literal map that the universe left on your body to help you know and understand who you are. And uh, it's all done with proportions and symmetry. Your eyebrows actually have proportions as well that they... Um, that they match up with. So I didn't completely follow my natural eye line because I needed one eyebrow that was rounded on top and I needed one eyebrow that was pointed. So uh, for those of you that this is your first video, my eyebrows do not normally look like this. Um, I just wanted to make sure you could see them. So, okay, first, um, your eyebrows are part of your decision-making process. They're also filters. And <laughs> that is something that uh, with, think about in uh, body language, when we speak so much with our eyebrows, people don't even have to say anything, but if you're talking and they don't agree with you, they'll give you this. And you know, you know, the eyebrow gave it away. Or if they're skeptical, you just get one. Or if they're confused... It's never just, if, if I were like, show me with just your eyes, just move your eyes and show me you're confused. You can't do it. <laughs> so your eyebrows are an indicator of your thought process. What's going on when we're really excited, when someone's telling a really passionate story, their eyebrows go up. And when they're telling a really sad story and there's empathy and there's compassion, the eyebrows come down. So they are an indicator of emotion. They're also part of the decision-making process. So I have not done a video on hair as a whole because uh, there's so much, um, there's so many different parts to hair. Hair has texture, it has density, it has a curl pattern, it has color. Uh, it ha And so then people want to get into hair loss and all sorts of other things. So I'm going to maybe do several videos on the different types of hair. And we're gonna start with eyebrows and eyelashes. So hair as a whole are filters. Oh good, comments are showing up today. Hey Taylor, hey Ashley. Oh, last time I did a video there were no comments and it got awkward for me towards the end. Okay, so <laughs> when um, hair in general is a filter. So think about physiologically what your hair does. Um, all the hair on our head is to help regulate body temperature. It protects us from sun. That's why you have hair anywhere on your body as it's part of a protection, but it is also helping to filter. We have hair in our nose and our ears as part of our immune system to help filter and keep stuff out. So hair on the external above your eyebrows here uh, is all about filtering information and filtering through uh, your emotions. So I was a cosmetologist. I've been licensed for over 20 years now. I spent a decade and a half standing in front of a mirror working with women and I had to really be aware of my eyebrows <laughs> because I'm standing in front of a mirror, which means I can't hide my facial expression. And so when people would say things, and this is whether you're for or against masks is not what this statement is about. But right now, because so many of us are covering, all we have are people's eyebrows. <laughs> so if you want to know what someone really thinks, um, start watching their eyebrows. This is a beautiful uh, time in our history to pay attention to eyebrows. So the arch, whether you have more of a point or it's more rounded and smooth, um, that is where uh, decision making comes out. And then the thickness uh, is, uh, that's your filter. So one is your ability to actually judge things. I've got notes, I'm gonna switch them onto my other screen so I stop looking to the side. So the thickness is uh, your filter and how much additional information you want or need 
uh, before making a decision. The shape is what affects your ability to make the decision. So let's talk about what that actually means. And then I'm gonna get into the different trends that are happening with eyebrows because it's fascinating to me. Um, so, oh, and the color. So mine are really intense. I don't usually draw them on this dark. Uh, naturally, eyebrows are usually only one shade lighter or darker than your natural color. And so that's why when you see someone who has blonde hair and like black eyebrows, you're like, huh, because it just, it, uh, there is a falseness to it. And as I uh, describe eyebrows, that'll make even more sense. So, okay, with the arch of the eyebrow, so this would be whether they are curved or whether they come to a point. Um, the more curved, the more um, easygoing you are in your opinion. It's something that you're like, I go with the flow. So think of just like soft rolling waves where someone who has a sharp point, they tend to be more... Um, they want more facts, they want more figures before they actually get to a decision making. So it's really interesting to me because there are some people who on the side that they have like the, I'm gonna go with the flow, they can raise the eyebrow and give it a point. So I cannot raise only my pointed eyebrow. Um, I can only raise my curved eyebrow. And so when I do need that moment of skepticism, my body has adapted to allow that. So, um, so what about one eyebrow is round and one is pointed? That, mine literally are. I have one eyebrow that's pointed and one that's round. Um, so I will get to that. And then what about thinning? I'll get to that in just a second too. So with, um, with your eyebrows, we instinctively through body language will adapt them with shapes and sizes as needed. So when you are talking to someone and they have a sharp point in their eyebrow right here, got to turn my face so you can see the right one so it comes to a point. That is someone who will want more details, facts, figures. They're going to want you to speak more to evidence where this person is going to want you to speak more to emotion and they're more likely to go with the flow. Um, uh, another thing, so part of the, if you have one and one, so they're different, keep in mind that the left side of your face, the left side, is about past experiences and it is also your feminine energy. The right side of your face is about your future and it's also the masculine side. So you need to take into consideration, um, for me example, my go with the flow is on my, my masculine side. And so when I am in masculine energy, I tend to be more uh, go with the flow. When I'm in my feminine energy, I tend to want more facts and figures before I get that decision. Or if it's something dealing with, um, like with my right, I, I'm a dreamer. I love to be able to dream about my future. I love to be able to just ride with it. But if they were reversed and this skeptical eyebrow was on my future side, I'm going to maybe get stuck a little bit in anxiety and overthinking and wanting all of the details before I go forward. Ooh, I'll get to flatline in just a second. And I'm going to want all the details before I go forward. Um, and so when you have the points on both, so they're both pointy, whether it's about your future or about your past, you're going to want to question, you want more details, you want more logistics before you decide. Um, if both are wrong, <laughs> if both are curved, then you are more, um, both sides are curved, then whether it's about your future or about your past, it's, it's almost like you're more easily swayed with um, an emotional response. So then, yes, there's a third eyebrow, which obviously I don't have because I only have two eyebrows, but it's more of just a flat line. It just goes straight across. There's no up, there's no down. It's just straight across. So these are very much my prove it to me people. Um, and this, it's the same coin, just one on each side. So once you prove something to them, it takes a while to prove something to them. But on the other side of that same coin is that once you've proven it to them, good luck trying to disprove it to them. So they're very tenacious once they make a decision. Um, so part of that is that they get stuck in their head a lot. Um, they want, they, they are not 
the up and down. Hi, Alicia. They're not the ups and downs and crazy emotional. Um, they're the people that are more like level headed because think about what having flat eyebrows across does to you and your decision making. You become the level headed person and that's why you actually, it actually shows up on your head <laughs> that you tend to be more level headed. Um, where the more extreme eyebrows, the more ups and downs they are, the more ups and downs they are in their decision making as well. Um, our body is so beautiful at showing our insides out. And so um, I think it's fascinating that eyebrows are something that have become a trend. You can go all the way back to the 20s, which is where makeup trends started to really play in society. And um, the thicker the eyebrow, the more of a filter we need. And the thinner the eyebrow, the less thought we put into something before we take action. So let's, let's just stick within our lifetime, right? Think of the late 90s and the early 2000s where we all had like commas <laughs> for eyebrows. You had like a dot and then like one line of an eyebrow. So then you fast forward a couple of years and everyone has these like thick, over-dramatized, um, very accentuated eyebrows. Well, you had an entire generation of people who were in their 20s who were very impulsive and they didn't think through and they they did just jump into their decision making and their eyebrows were these little bitty commas. <laughs> and right after that, you have a generation that were in very impressionable years during the 2008s when um, things were in great turmoil and they learned very quickly, I need to analyze everything. And their makeup trend is to have these very thick, defined, excessive eyebrows. And they got darker, they got thicker, and they got more defined um, because you have people that are wanting to think things through, but you also have a generation that is riddled with anxiety um, where the generation before that was like, I have no cares in the world, which is both good and bad. Don't misunderstand me. Um, that is something that uh, as, and so here's here's one of the beautiful parts about this. There, there are some things on your body that you can fake and your eyebrows is one that um, if you are needing some help with decision making and you're trying to show your brain I need some more time. I need to be allowed to think this through a little bit. Overdefine your eyebrows. If you're like, I overthink everything, then stop giving yourself thick, overdefined eyebrows, and it will help because your brain will like, oh, see, we don't we don't have to think things through that thoroughly. Um, and so it is makeup is something that can help or can hinder. And I get questions all the time about makeup, and I say, Are you rejecting or are you emphasizing? So if you love the shape of your eyebrows and so you just trace what they are, even if it means you have one with a point and one with a curve, um, then you're accentuating, you're embracing. If you are the person that takes glue and cover up and completely removes your eyebrow so that you can then retrace it, <laughs> um, you have a very hard time making decisions based on your ability. You want everyone else's decision. And so when you have these people that are completely changing the shape of their eyebrow based on what others tell them to, that's what's happening with their decision-making process as well. They're erasing what they are and letting other people tell them what to do. So I'm going to let you guys internalize that as deeply as you need to. Um, so actually my son has to think to find out. Okay, so I forgot to tell you the measurements. So if you were, but those of you who are really into eyebrows probably already know these measurements and didn't realize that they were also anatomic. So if you take a pencil and you put it, I'll put it on the right, you put it on the outside of your nose, your eyebrow should not be past that. So if I'm going to do this a little bit. So if that were straight and that were, you would want to remove the eyebrow. So the only part of the body that I'm like, you should change that is right here. Because when you have a unibrow, you have a lot of congestion 
in your ability to spiritually discern information. So I do tell people, you want to keep this area clear. You want to keep filters and congestions away from that. Okay, so then the other one is if you take the pencil from the corner of the nose to the outside corner of the eyebrow is where the tail should come to. Like that. So some of you, your eyebrow ends here. Extend it. <laughs> And then the arch, you can't see my pupils, but the arch of, if you take from here, the arch should go where the pupil hits. So if you go from the corner of the nose over the pupil, that's where the arch should be. So here, uh, it's backwards. I am not a makeup person. <laughs> so I'm not used to doing tutorials on makeup. So here over the pupil is the arch, the tail is the edge of the eye. Okay, so then those of you who have thinning eyebrows or um, are losing them. Hi, Holly. I love Holly. Um, so those of you who are starting, part of that is uh, your thyroid. Um, a lot of women who have thyroid issues also have thinning eyebrows or um, they're not growing back. And so, uh, but your thyroid is all about being able to voice your truth and voice your opinions. And so... If you are making decisions and you are getting those ahas, but then you're not speaking truth, your body, in an effort to help lessen your ability to get stuck on overthinking, will remove the filter for you. <laughs> Thank you, body. Um, so now before someone says, so wait, if I start speaking truth, my eyebrows will get thicker? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> If you start, um, if you stop overanalyzing and you stop doubting the decisions you've made, you start speaking your actual desires. Yes, I want this and I'm allowed to, to say it and to express it and to want it. Then your body will no longer feel the need to remove the filter on your decision making. Um, bangs, squirrel, bangs kind of also have this because your forehead is part of your decision-making process as well. So people who have a really hard time making decisions or they're overthinking, what do we do? Like when you are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You're trying to block out information from, um, making you think more. And so in confusion, in desperation, we do this. And so whenever there are trends with bangs that you have like the the bangs that cover the whole forehead um or even like the swoopy bangs that is a generation of people that are on information overload and they're kind of trying to get out of confusion um the swoopy bangs you know it's i i want I, i'll let pieces in versus those that it's like you know right now no bangs part down the middle everything is very present very in the moment very give me all the information I can get because I need to be able to um, go through it on my own. And you're also watching, that is why people suddenly want bangs. So if you're watching, um, when the eyebrow trend uh, really started, it was more of the softer rounded. And now as we uh, spend more time in, in a time of such conflict and disarray, the trend is going more towards a pointed eyebrow because we are getting more skeptical. We want more information. Uh, and so you will never ever look at someone's eyebrows the same again. You're welcome. Um, including your own, but that is something that this is one, one of the beautiful times where we can say, okay, I am overthinking everything. Then buy a lighter eyebrow pencil and don't put them in so dark. Let them be a, a shade that's closer to your skin because the darker, the more the filter the lighter, um, the lighter, the color, the less protection you need against uh, making that decision. So if hair on your head and hair on your forehead is a filter, what do you think your eyelashes are? They filter your ability to view the world. And so without getting too detailed into eyelashes, um, and I, I know I'm going to get flack for this and I'm going to say it anyways. Right now, there's this huge trend to have big, thick, fake eyelashes, right? Um, I mean, it's almost like you have butterflies. But it's because so many things in the world right now are things that we don't want to see. Um, whether it's ourself, our neighbor, what, just things that are going on around us. 
If you look at the times in history when thick, fake eyelashes were trending, so like back in the 60s and 70s, they were times of great upheaval and discourse. And not everybody wanted to see that, so we found a fake filter. Oh, oh, whoa, okay, I'll send them comments come up. Gaining a deep understanding of your husband, yes. And and men do think so much differently with women, than women do, and men typically have thicker eyebrows. And think of like old men, they get those like old old men eyebrows and they have like the Dr. Spocks where they like start to grow up the forehead because they're even more skeptical of the world and they even analyze it even more and they, they draw from their history and their past. Um, let's see. You've gone lighter with your eyebrow pencil. Yes. We feel better. Naturally dark, thick, long lashes. Oh, okay. So those, this is the thing is, for those of you, because I actually have fairly long eyelashes. I don't know if you can see. The, I just put one coat mascara. It's like cheap drugstore mascara. I purposely tried to just make them dark enough that you can see. I naturally have long eyelashes. They're not as thick as my kids. My kids' eyelashes are so thick. But that is their natural eyelash. And so they are already someone who has a filtered view of the world versus people who have um, zero eyelashes, short eyelashes, and they glue on or get extensions and they have little butterfly wings, okay? Those are people that emotionally are just not ready to view and deal with what's going on around them. And yes, they make your eyes look beautiful and I get all of those things. So if you're like, I have a pretty good view of the world. It's probably because when you view the world and you're trying to make decisions, you don't have makeup on. <laughs> but when you're out dealing with the world and in people's processes, you made sure you have full face makeup on. Oh, your natural eyebrows are, are more lighter now. Gotcha, Michelle. <laughs> They're falling out and growing and all wompy. Okay, so first off, eyelashes in general, both eyebrows and eyelashes, um, grow on a six to eight week process. So every six to eight weeks, a third of your eyebrows or eyelashes have, are, have removed themselves and new ones are growing back in their place. But if she has like clumps that are moving, is she pulling them out, Angela? Because if she's pulling them out, that's a very different thing. Um, for people who pull out their eyebrows or pull out their eyelashes, um, it is people are like, oh, it's a nervous habit. Yes, but it's a nervous habit uh, based on their ability to make decisions or their ability to believe what they see. So if you go back and you look at a more natural eyelash, um, this is when you have people who, um, when you had a society that they wanted to see everything. They didn't want to be blindsided. And so you tended to have a very thin layer, a, a very thin eyeliner. And um, they wanted long eyelashes, but they didn't want the thick, clumpy eyelashes um, because they wanted to see. They didn't want things filtered. And so following trends defines how you think. Yes. <laughs> Think that through. Um, the, the, mere, the mere fact that you are letting others tell you whether or not you have value is, is very much what a trend is. Are you accepted? Are you, valu are, you, are you valued? And no, I'm not saying that you're like, well, don't have eyebrows. Completely ostracize yourself. But a trend happens because people are looking for a sense of belonging. And we don't feel like we belong somewhere unless we first find safety in that place. And so a trend forms because it's a rule. And enough people accept that rule that it becomes a trend and people follow the trend so that they can feel loved and accepted. And when we feel loved and accepted, it absolutely influences our decision making. So, um, okay, so Angela said, yes, clumps are coming out. So that is something that um, eye or eyelashes they're looking through an uneven filter. So if they're like really, really clumpy on the edges, the things that come at them from the side, so things that might um, think your peripheral vision, things that might come at them from the side, it hits them when they're not ready for it. Um, something that blindsided them, 
those are going to be thicker on the edges. No one likes to be blind. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. No one likes to be blindsided versus if they're thicker and clumpier more towards the center. The center of your face is all about the present, the here and the now. Um, are, how are they viewing what's going on right here, right now? So that is, and if they're just falling out in clumps, there are things that she wants to make sure that she sees through. She wants the truth of everything. She wants to be able to see everything that's going on around her. So, yeah, and and they would. They would um, very much just struggle, struggle with that. So I am fine without eyelashes and eyebrows, and I had a coach that required them, and now I put them on most days out of a habit. So a lot of... Uh, how do I want to say this? So when you have style coaches that are trying to help you with branding and they are looking for um, pictures and, okay, and this is why, like I said, I drew my eyebrows on darker and more extreme than I usually do because if I were to take and remove my eyebrow, all of the sudden... I'm not seen as much. And this is another reason why we like to have darker eyebrows because we want people to know that we're capable of making decisions, but that our decisions are also worth listening to. So part of it is a logistics thing. Which side of my face is going to show up better in a photograph? So if you're working with a branding coach and they're trying to help you with that kind of stuff, they are going to put fake eyelashes on you and they are going to put eyebrows on you. But it's also going to falsely... It's going to alter the way that you decision make. <laughs> That's really weird now. All my perfectionists right now are going to have a hard time watching the rest of this video. You're welcome. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's so under my eyes. It's always dark. Don't know if my eyelids or under my eyes is too oily, but does that relate? Okay. So eyelids um, are more in with the skin. I will say this because this might help. Anytime you overuse uh, a portion of your body, the skin will get, um, what, am, uh, your skin will get oily. So when you have really oily eyelids, one, get better sleep, which I believe you have a, a young child. So good luck, get whatever sleep you can get, Ashley. <laughs> but, um, so when you have oily eyelashes or oily skin, but you're getting good sleep, you're overanalyzing the things that you see and the things that you view. So try to just be an observer of your world. Instead of seeing things like, oh, my floor is messy and that now means this, 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 and this about my life and, and who I am as a person, just say, wow, I left a blanket on the ground. Observe it, don't analyze it. And as a new mama, that's so hard because you want to find an answer to everything because you feel so out of control. Uh, and so finding the why doesn't change that it happened though. Uh, and so people that have really oily eyelids um, or they just have a tendency to rub. Yeah. You're, when our eyes are irritated, I think, let's see, what if your eyebrows are itchy? So you're irritated about the decision you have to make when we rub our eyes. Um, we're trying to rub away what we just saw. And think about that. If you're tired, but it actually takes less effort to turn Netflix off. And so you're tired and you're rubbing your eyes and your body is trying to say, go to bed. We don't want to see this anymore. Um, stop stop scrolling through Instagram. Get off TikTok. And your eyes are, are, are burning. They're irritated with what they see. If you're itchy, you're, you're annoyed or irritated about what you're, the decision you're trying to make. Um, remember symptoms aren't good or bad. They're just messages. And so very rarely in body mapping, do I tell you to alter or change, uh, the way that it looks. So, I mean, if someone, people ask me all the time, well, what about plastic surgery? Well, did you get a nose job? Cause you got in a car accident and you showed them a picture of your previous nose and said, give me this back. That's restoration versus you got in a car accident and you have to get a nose job. And you said, well, since you're doing it anyways, can I have her nose? That's rejection. So with your eyebrows, if you're like, well, I need help in my decision making, 
I need to be firmer in my decision making. I need to think things through because I'm so impulsive. Then give yourself an arch. Make them a little bit more darker and a little bit more defined. But if you're like, I overthink everything, buy a lighter eyebrow pencil. I'm not suggesting you do a 1990s wax so that you have nothing left, but just slightly alter them so that your brain then gets the signal. I don't have to think this through as much. I hope that helps. Let's see. Eyebrows are the one top thing I always feel I need to change. Darken and thicken, and then that makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, and eyebrows are something that you can very easily change, just like your ability to change your mind. Let's see. Your, I think that's supposed to be middle section. And my eyelids get so sore when I'm stressed. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll go there. So the outside of your eyes is kind of um, your person. It's when we get blindsided, it'll affect the corners, the outside corners of, of our eyes. When and, and this goes for eyes, eyebrows, eyelashes, things on the edges of our eye are what blindsided us, what came out of nowhere, what was not in our view, but then all of a sudden greatly affected us. That's going to affect the outside edge. And so this is why you want the tail to come all the way. Because then even when you are blindsided, you still have the ability to make a decision about it. But if your eyebrow ends up here and something hits you from the side, it's really hard for you to be able to process through it. Um, so outside edge is your, your, the things that are out of perception, um, they're not clearly in view, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, socially, things that are in the center right here. Those are actually um, what is currently on your mind. So when it's the center, if you are, if you are caught in the what if cycle, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? And it's about something you're reading, something you're currently looking at. That's going to happen right here. Things that happen in the center. So right here, those are, you're out of balance. And that's why the center, you're trying to balance yourself out. Um, but they're also your ability to, on um, the here and now and the future. So the closer the things, the closer to the center, your eyes, that's your future and your, your direct present, the here and now. So when you're, the middle sections of your eyelids are, are getting sore when you're stressed out, this don't overcomplicate this close them but as you close them shut the door on whatever you're thinking about give yourself a brain break that's why we blink <laughs> yes physiologically you need to um you need the mucous membranes to uh re-moisturize but have you ever noticed when someone's telling you something you don't want to hear you blink more or when you're confused blink 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 um, we're trying to close the door. We're trying to detach from the situation. And so when you're starting to get stressed out in that center of your eye, close and breathe. Just take 10 deep breaths, slow, deep breaths, and then reopen and ask yourself, am I seeing this in the best way? Not the right or wrong way. Am I seeing this in the best way? Because so much of our eyes has to do with our perception and the way we view the world. And right now, Everyone's view of the world is being challenged. I don't care what side of what line you're on. Everyone's view of the world is being challenged right now. And so, so many people are having eye problems. They're having eyebrow problems. They're having throat and uh, thyroid problems. They're having digestive issues. And everyone's blaming it on stress, but those actually all have to do with decision making. Um, my makeup is literally almost the same way. So, Taylor chain uh, just pick one thing like either with your eyelashes or your eyebrows or your eyeliner um i i'll probably have to do a different video on the shape or angle of your eye i think i've done an eye angle video anyways but the angle that we put our eyeliner on actually also changes the perception of the world oh i just looked at the time this video is getting a little bit long um does it mean anything if i regularly choose glasses that hide my right eyebrow and then just let the point peek out of the left you can see both through the lenses, but not above the rim on the frame. Okay, so if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, you pick glasses that hide your eyebrows because you don't want to have to explain your decisions to anyone. So they don't get to know anything about your decision-making process because once you've made it, 
it's made. And you're okay with um, your left eyebrow showing because those are decisions about your past and you can't undo them. So, but you don't want people to question you on them either. Okay, this is now a 40 minute video. I love you so much. I am gonna stop here because I really want to honor, I do try to keep these to um, 30 minutes or less. This will get put up on YouTube, so if you're not following me at Reflections Inside and Out on YouTube, please go subscribe to that. If I can get 100 followers, then I can get an easier address to, um, to find me. I love you so much. I hope this was helpful. Go play with your eyebrows. Decide what it is that you want to, to do with your decision making. Do you want to make it easier and lighter and brighter? Or do you want to keep it heavy and analytical? There's no right or wrong with this. Just decide what you need right now in your life. And I love you. Have a fantastic day.